Hello and welcome to this quick tip tutorial where we're going to have a look at how do we stop an AIM device from logging lots of individual one lap files which not only take up memory on your actual device but they also make it difficult to find the actual session that you've been running. And so to explain what I mean I'm actually going to have a look at uh, some sessions that recorded last weekend uh, when I was at the track. Now I use a memory module for my vehicle so I'm just going to click here and you'll notice as it loads the files you can see that I've downloaded all the files that I need but it's left all of these individual one lap files. Now I only did three sessions last weekend um, at Castle Coombe but I've got all of these. There's actually 17 different individual one lap files. Now not only these are taking up space um, on my memory module but they're also potentially making it harder to be able to find the actual session that is there. So we've got to understand why this is happening and how we can stop this from happening. What I will say at this point is that if you have an AIM Solo 2, you cannot, con you cannot control this. Um, this is designed for people who have a configuration. So if you've got an AIM Solo 2 DL or any of the dashes or data loggers, this is something that you can actually work with. And to be able to do that, you need to go into the configuration file. So I'm going to do that up here. I'm going to click on this little gear icon and you can see these are the configurations that I've been running lately. So um, last weekend it was race and so I'm going to click on this uh, Evo 4S configuration that I have um, for my race car. As I load it up, the most important tab that we need to look at to be able to control when the device records data and when it doesn't is the parameters tab. So I'm going to click here and one of the things you can see is that all of a sudden these are the parameters that tell the device a little bit of information not only about where it is um, uh, in relation to the track but also um, when to start recording data. Now the top section here is lap detection and I think today with most of the modern devices that we all use and have done for at least the last 10 years GPS is the primary indicator that tells the device that it's actually at the track. However, this is also designed that if there is the beacon, um, and AIM used to have a beacon uh, technology that would be at the track, which would indicate where the actual uh, track and the lap was, you could change that. But right now, we're just gonna leave it at GPS because most of us have that. The next is um, the reference speed. Now this references what particular um, channel we're gonna use to be able to indicate speed. Now, um, in this instance, it's GPS speed. It's not actually selected because GPS speed is all I have. But if you happen to have an ECU that's passing through speed or you happen to have a wheel speed sensor, you can change it to be able to tell the parameters as to what channel is indicative of speed. But again, we're not going to touch that because today this is a quick tip. So we're going to look at seeing if we can avoid many of those individual singular lap files. So that's where we get on this start data recording. Now, these are the parameters that the device has to be able to um, know when to start recording and when not to. And this is really important because I'd actually thought that I'd change these parameters um, so that it wouldn't actually log a lot of sessions and a lot of files. And so I was a bit surprised to see all of those individual laps within my own data. Now, for many of us, we will probably have this selected um, as uh, the default that comes with the device. And this just says start recording when the RPMs are greater than 850 or the speed is greater than six miles an hour. And so as a result, what's gonna happen here is if you happen to be warming up the car, for example, or you happen to be in a position where you're going to get fuel or you're going to get weighed, or you're driving through the paddock all the way to pre-grid or any of those particular parameters where the vehicle's moving but not on the racetrack for a race or a qualifying session, it's gonna record a session. So for me, I was like, okay, great. I wanna change that to some custom conditions. So I tick on um, custom conditions and I've said, I'd like mine to record when the RPMs are greater than 3000 RPM and the speed is greater than 15 miles an hour. This allows me to know that it's not a scenario where I will be um, driving around the paddock faster than 15 miles an hour uh, and the RPMs are not just necessarily the car ticking over or idling in the paddock. Now the challenge that I had was that I actually set this wrong and I've got it so that if any of these conditions are met, which meant that for example, if we happen to have been in a position whereby the car was being warmed up um, and the revs were uh, revved quite high, it would have recorded a session because it was revving, but it wasn't necessarily moving. So it would have triggered this one, but not this one because any of these conditions are met. And so what I also needed to do, which I'll change for the next time, 
is I'll say all of these conditions be, uh, being met. So now, for example, um, if the engine is being warmed up but the car's not moving, it won't log a session, for example. If the car's moving and it revs above uh, 3,000 RPM is only doing 10 miles an hour because I'm going to get weighed or I'm moving from the paddock to the pre-grid, it won't trigger a session. And so these are all for you to be able to adjust and configure. You can change these to greater than or it's equal between, very much like you're setting up an alarm um, or any other kind of conditional formatting that you have. And so um, very important. Now you can add other variables here as well. You just click on this and say, I want some additional information. This might be associated with um, you know, the, the additional parameters such as uh, speed or RPMs, or you could have other variables in here as well based upon the channels that you have. But for most people, RPMs and speed will be the two primaries. And so that's how you control it. You set up your kind of custom conditions, you save, you upload that back to the device. And hopefully next time you go out, if you got it right, and I didn't actually get it right, but if you got it right, um, you should find it much easier to be able to find the files that you have. So hopefully you found this quick tip useful. If you like it, give it a thumbs up. Please let me know if you want to see anything different in the comments box below. And that just leaves me to say thanks so very much for watching.